If you're looking for all kinds of Valentine's Day decorating ideas, keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. We are going to start off with a rectangle Dollar Tree sign. This one happens to be from Fall, but you can use any rectangle sign that you find. I'm going to use some of this heart lace that came from Dollar Tree and a napkin from Dollar Tree. This is actually a tea towel and I got it last year. So of course we're going to start by taking off all of our tags and our extra stuff. I want to save this family word and use it in the fall so I'm just going to scrape it off and I'm going to use my white chalk paint because as you see this napkin is kind of a sheer and I don't want to be able to see brown behind it. I want it to be bright white so we'll do a coat of this on the back. It doesn't have to be perfect. And in the meantime, while it's drying, I'm going to take my little mini press here and use it like an iron. And I'm going to get all of the wrinkles out of this part of the towel. I'm just getting an idea of how I want it to lay and it fits nicely. And I'm going to trim that out so I don't have a bunch of extra to deal with. I'm leaving on the edge on the bottom and I'm going to use that right on the edge of the bottom of the sign. Then I'm just going to start by wrapping the corners so nothing gets distorted. Too much pulling and stretching will make it look um, curved or warped. It'll do that to the image. So you just want to be sure that you're working on each side, flipping it over, looking at it, and making sure that you haven't pulled anything out of place. We want this to be high end, and I think we achieved that. So I'm going to take some of that lace ribbon on the bottom and just measure it off there lightly and go right above where it has the seam and this will cover the seam nicely and give us a little bit of a almost like a fringe that hangs off the bottom i think that's pretty and you can see you can really see the lace that way rather than putting it completely over the white fabric then you wouldn't be able to see the pattern but you can see here clearly that it's hearts now i'm going to embellish the baskets and I'm just using some of this. You can get some of this. You can use Baker's twine or jute, whatever you have. And I've had this for a while. Not sure where it came from, but you can get it pretty much anywhere. Probably at Dollar Tree. Make a little bow and then trim it down as long as you want it. You can adjust the length of the loops by just pulling on the tails. And I know this seems like a simple bow, but some people really struggle with this. So I want to be sure that I give you a clear idea of what to do so you don't struggle. I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue and just attach that there to the front of my basket. Gives a little interest and dimension. I think it really pretties it up. These are pretty DIYs. I'm going to make them pretty. I know I'm out of the frame here. Forgive me for that. But I'm just putting a white little wooden heart here right on top of a balloon that was there and it covers it up completely. It's going to give some dimension. And then I'm going to put one of these little hearts that you can get from Dollar Tree on it. So pretty much you could do this entire project with Dollar Tree items. One more bow right to the center of the little grapevine wreath that's on that white piece. And then we can put a hanger in the back. You can use it as a leaner if you want to. But we're going to hang it. And I'm just using some scrap ribbon from Christmas. I'm putting that on the back. And the loop is big enough that you can move it back and forth to make sure that it is centered correctly on your wall and hanging nice and straight. Very easy. Okay, for the next project, we're going to do a little shabby chic or Victorian inspired piece. I've got some of these cards that I thrifted and I love these. These are all kind of a Victorian Valentine's Day cards. They came in a little set. And I'm just looking here. I want you to be able to see them because they're so precious. And then just choosing the ones that I want to use for this project. I've also got some thrifted pieces here. Um, metal hearts. And then I have this little plastic key that's got some little bobbles hanging off. This is my vintage Victorian-like ribbon. Love this stuff. And then an envelope that's metal. And mine came from the thrift store, but it looks like it came from Dollar General. And then you can get these at Dollar Tree sometimes. I'm going to use my satin spray paint to just give it like an off-white color and then the metal pieces are going to get a little dabble of this gold paint and this is just to kind of give it some age and also to match a little bit better with our decor now i'm going to use some of my white wax 
I've had a lot of good luck with these. I've had a lot of beautiful projects come from this. And I'm just going to show you what you can do if you want to tone down the brassy look of a gold. You can use this white wax. Just give it a good coat. I used a stiff brush to put it on so I could get in all those little cracks around the little flower patterns and the letters. And then I'm just using a clean rag and wiping it all back down. And that gives it just the slightest amount of dullness, which I like. And you can see the before and after. So you can choose whichever look you like best. Now I'm going to take this little key and I'm going to do the same thing here. I do end up removing the little ornaments that are on there. I kept the heart and the bow and I saved the cat for something else. But I'm just putting this on with a brush because you have to get in those little tiny spots. So I got a different brush that's a little softer to get in all those cracks. And then I'm going to take a clean stiff brush and use it to wipe all of the wax off, well, all the extra wax off, I'll put it that way, on this one. And then it gives it an aged look and it, coordinate, it coordinates nicely with the heart, the large heart that we did. And I will be using those little pieces, but I did take them off, but I'll be using those in this project. Okay, so these are just little heart, I guess you could put them on a tree. Um, I'm gonna cut the little hangers off because we're going to make picks. Here is my dried envelope. Doesn't matter what the inside looks like because you're not going to see that in the project. I'm going to take some foam blocks and I just like to use my metal ruler to just slice those into the size I need them. I'm going to place those down in there and then break that other half into two pieces and shove it down in the sides. Now we have plenty to hold it down. You could always take some hot glue if you want to hold those in place. I'm going to take a variety of flowers. Now, I've chosen these three cards, and I'm looking at the flowers that are in these cards so that I can get the same colors and shapes in my floral arrangement. And I've got some little thrifted rosebuds that are just precious, but they don't have stems. Not a problem. I've got these little picks that I thrifted, and I'm going to make some stems. So I'm just first going to put a little hot glue be sure that you're protecting your hands here. Just a little hot glue like that. Let it dry. Then I'm going to take my wax floral tape. Go up to the top. When you pull it, it activates the wax and will make it sticky. And then keep a little tension as you twist going down and it will stick down. A lot of people don't understand the, the tape. They don't like it, but they're not using it correctly. So I'm pulling on it slightly as I'm twisting. And that's what's going to make it stay in place. Perfect. Now we have a long stem. I've got some of these beautiful fern pieces. They're thrifted, of course. And I'm just gonna start putting these in. This is not gonna be a symmetrical arrangement. This is going to be asymmetrical. It is going to be kind of a, oh, I don't know. I'm not gonna call it a mess. It's just gonna be more free-spirited, if you will, because Victorian arrangements don't really have like a really, um, specific you have to do the same thing on the right and left kind of pattern you know like we do in a lot of our ranging so this is going to be a little bit wilder and I love that and I'm just going to start placing down my roses they're my biggest flowers are the ones that are the largest and then I'm going to take my little daisy picks and some more of my little roses and just stick those in there and I'm just kind of eyeballing this there's really no not a lot of balance in here so far and that may drive some people crazy you can just do it however you like however you like it but if you look at the little cards um, looking at my little cards there it's almost like somebody picked flowers and just laid them down they are not in any particular pattern we're going to do the same thing here even if you have a stem and you want to elongate it just add your pick to it add your hot glue and then put the wax on there little wax tape. Now I'm going to add some of this beautiful blue. I've had these blue picks for a while and this is perfect because they match almost identically to what's in one of the cards. I want to embellish the envelope with a card and this is the one that I chose because it's heart shape. So I'm going to just glue it together. You can use a glue stick or tape or you could just tear the back off if you want. And I'm going to use little poppets. You can get things that are similar to this at Dollar Tree. They're just little foam 
they, they raise up your projects pretty much. And they're sticky on both sides. And I'm going to use this because the front of the envelope is at a slant. So I'll be gluing the top part and then the little riser at the bottom will help it stand out so it won't lay flush down. Now I'm going to make picks with these little hearts and I'm just going to add some hot glue, the little pick on the back, simple, simple. I don't use, I don't have to use any tape on those. They stick nicely. Now to make these cards into picks, this is so simple. Start by putting your pick down in there as long as you need it to be. And remember, you can always cut those off. Add a little glue and then press it down. And now you have a beautiful little pick. So easy. Same with this one, only this card flips over from the top instead of from the side. Not a problem. And again, you could just use one piece, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to use the whole card because it's thicker, it looks more substantial. Now I'm taking my little cherub here and putting a little glue on her, or him, whichever one, and I'm going to start placing the cards down. The rest of the arrangement of the flowers will be around these cards because I don't want to cover them up. I want them to be center stage. So I'll be looking at it and seeing what needs a little bit more and adding to it as I go. Now I want to add this back on. I didn't put wax on the back, so it should be fine. We're going to wire it and I just made a little hook and threaded it through the flower. I'm going to kind of twist it together a little bit to make one piece and then feed it through the top where this hole is. If there's no hole in yours, you don't have to worry about this. You can just glue it down there. And I am going to help give it a little bit of balance by twisting this into a circle. It's going to help kind of hold it straight and it looks neater. A little hot glue will keep it from slipping around and slipping through. And then I've just put a little piece of extra fabric right over the top of that to hold it down. And to keep my glue from sticking anywhere. All right, so now I'm just looking around to see what I have. Pulling some things out and forward and I realize I need something on a smaller scale. So these beautiful little blue flowers are perfect. I'm going to stick those all over the place. I think the reason I like the like the Victorian type flower arranging is because it's so wild looking and it's it's really like the rustic that I love. I know it sounds strange because definitely Victorian is not rustic, but there's something shabby chic about it that just really fits into the aesthetic that I like in my home. So I do have a special place in my heart for it. And that's why I like to focus Valentine's Day, you know, for a little bit more of this wild kind of stuff. I'm adding in the heart picks now, here and there. And then you could also, if you don't have cards, I got out those little those little paper hearts over there you can use stuff like that or you can use modern you know little Valentine cards whatever you have for whatever style that you want and if you don't want to do Victorian you certainly don't have to you can use any flowers so from the keychain or the little key I had the heart and I put the heart right on the top of that one card I'm going to replace my hook and you see it's gold now and it was like a silver color before and just using these little jewelry pieces clamps I'm just going to uh, I think the word is pliers I'm gonna put them back down I use the bow on the little cherub's head so now she's a girl for sure and then I'm going to use some of this beautiful lace to put right down over the edge of this metal I felt like it needed to be softened a bit and I wanted the opportunity to use this without making a bow and this is a perfect way to do it I'm just embellishing around the opening of the envelope what do you think this was a very fun project for me. I love it very, very much. All right, the next project. We are going to be doing a heart round. So this is a Dollar Tree piece, and this is a thrifted piece, and the fabric was also thrifted. Someone had worked on this themselves, and so now I'm gonna give it some new life. I'm pulling off the staples and the hanger, and you could see that it needs to be sanded quite desperately. So I am going to get out my sander, give it a good sanding and then it's gonna look a little bit better it is not exactly round all the way around but I don't mind that remember what I said about rustic we embrace those imperfections don't we let's take the hanger out of this little palette sign 
I'm going to cover the holes with a little masking tape on the back and then when we flip it over you can just add a little bit of that spackling right into those little spots. I like to use the back of a, my little rubber spatula to kind of scrape that off so it's nice and even so that's what you see me doing there and then I just add it back into my jar to be used another time. I'm going to use this little tool which now you can get at Dollar Tree so be sure you look in your crafter square for it. It's very thin you can cut yourself be careful I've done it many many times. Now I'm going to mix up a stain with a little bit of this territorial beige and water. Mix it really well and I will be coloring my nice little piece. And I just used one of those cloths that come from that comes from Dollar Tree. It's the little fuzzy cloths in the auto detail section and um, it works really good for this. And I'm just rubbing it into that freshly sanded wood to give it a nice solid coat. This is a light coat and I know that with paint I can go ahead and use hot glue. We won't have a problem had I done this with the the antiquing wax that I normally use there might would have been a problem with the glue sticking. All right now I'm going to take these little wooden pieces and I'll be covering them with this red and white striped fabric which I think is very farmhouse and gorgeous. I'm going to cut it down just so I have some more manageable pieces and then I'm going to use my Mod Podge to put this down on the fabric. You're going to take the pretty side, the nice smooth side, and that's the side that you're going to be coating with the Mod Podge. I'm just using a matte Mod Podge here, but you can use whichever one you want. And I'm going to lay this face down, the, the uh, sticky side down there, right onto my fabric, trying to be conscious of the stripes that are on there so that everything is lined up nicely and we don't have a bunch of crooked mess. And I'm going to be doing that with each piece. Now while it's still wet I'm going to go ahead and cut that down just slice it into manageable pieces so that I can put them aside and let them dry. Now if you want to you can go ahead and put your Mod Podge on. Um, trim it down a little bit and go ahead and put your Mod Podge on which is what I did. Or you can do let that one side dry first and then go back and apply your Mod Podge on top of that. But you know I try to work quickly. I try to get these videos out for you guys and this is how I do it. It's still wet. I'm going to do it while it's still wet. It's the mess. It truly is a mess but I don't mind that. Don't mind it at all. It's the life of a crafter. So we're going to do that with all of them and let them dry overnight and then I'm going to come back with my utility knife. They come in three packs from the Dollar Tree. I highly recommend them. Just be very careful because they are sharp. And this go right down the edge of the wood and slice off that stiff fabric because now the fabric is like a paper. It is stiff and it will easily come right away. You don't have a lot of fraying or any of those problems. And this really is so much easier than using scissors. You get a nice clean line. Look at that. Perfect. So. Now what you can do is take a sanding block and just go ahead around all the edges and just kind of go over your edges which is going to give a little white edge. It's going to kind of um, give it a little aged look. I know I say that every video because, you know, rustic. That's what we do. And then when all your pieces are sanded, you can go back over with a piece of sandpaper and just scratch it up, rough it up, and make it look like you've had it for some time. I like the love that lasts forever. We're going to give it some dents and dings, just like relationships. So there we go. Really easy to do. You can skip this part if you want to. You don't have to do this. Now we're going to put these back down on top of the round. I'm trying to go with the grain um, because the grain of the wood and the stripes together, if they were askew, it would drive me nuts. So I'm just working with it and kind of eyeballing what we're going to do here. I'm going to use plain old hot glue because it's going to be inside my house. If you were to put this outside it would be a different situation but this is an inside piece so hot glue should hold it nicely for you. I'm going to add a little bit of weight just to hold it down while I work on the next pieces. So you can grab a Jenga block or something to divide and make a little spacer which is right here. So yeah, I forgot to show you that part. So now I'm showing you. 
and it's just going to give you the right spacing between your pieces. You can eyeball it. You know, you don't have to, to do this part. You're not gluing them down. You're just using them as a little placeholder. Y'all, the stripes on the fabric are making my camera do weird things. You should see the end screen. It's kind of craziness. I might need to put a seizure warning on it. All right, so now we're going to make a bow. I'm taking scraps of ribbon that I already had. I've just dovetailed them there in probably like four inch pieces here. And I'm taking a variety of patterns. I love the plaid. And then I've got the, the little lacy bow fabric there. I have some rickrack in there. Just a bunch of varieties, textures, patterns, colors, kind of craziness. But somehow they all work. So I'm going to add a little piece of that rickrack on top, flip it over, and then we're just going to tie it into a knot or two. And it holds it quite nicely. You can get these in any sewing place. You, you know, any place you can get fabric. And you can dig back through your Christmas stash and see what you have that would work for Valentine's Day. And use that. Use what you got. Save a little bit of money. Lord knows we spend enough during Christmas. So now you're just going to start the process of fluffing things out. You know, curving the dovetails. Making everything look exactly how you like it. And when you get it that way, you can just set it aside. We're going to cut another piece of that rickrack because I thought that would be really cute as a hanger. And once we know that it's dry, I'm going to flip it over. Just add a little glue and add this down. And this is going to be our hanger. So now we can add the little bow back onto the hanger. Or onto the hanger, not back onto it tie it and you can leave that as part of your bow if you would like give it a little extra oomph and then make sure that it looks pretty and that it is all laying out the way you like it I like to be sure that all of the different patterns are showing now I'm gonna give you some options this is some baby breath sort of looking floral you could do something like this which would be really pretty if you like it or you could use greenery like I'm going to do and these are just some thrifted pieces. Um, this is maybe like an evergreen or fern, something like that. But it is still winter, so I think it's appropriate. And just take the pieces that you want, tuck them under the edges, and just use a little bit of hot glue. And press it down. I like to use these clamps. They came from the laundry section in Dollar Tree. And they work for thicker projects when you need something just held down. And so that's what I've done there. I'm going to take this button that I have in my button jar, cut the back off because it looks like a little wood half, like a little slice, and I'm just going to add that right in the middle of the bow. And I think it complements the color in the wood round perfectly. I think it is beautifully rustic. So we did three projects in this video. I've staged it here for you so you can just see how it would look. There is our Dollar Tree sign and then see what I mean about the flashing heart it's the patterns my camera trying to focus on the pattern sorry I know it's annoying my beautiful Victorian envelope my Valentine spilling over with love my heart spilling over with love we have over 11,000 subscribers now y'all 11,000 Thank you all so very much for stopping by, and I will see you again soon. Bye. We're going to start off with one of these tinsel wreaths. Mine came from Goodwill, but you can certainly get these at Dollar Tree or at the Dollar General. You're going to start by removing all of this tinsel. So I'm just clipping one piece and then it's just wound around these little spike things that stick out on the side. We're going to remove all that tinsel just like this. You just wind them back and forth and then you're going to take some type of a cutter and remove those little spikes. We won't be needing those. So to get your frame all clean like this and be sure that you trim those down so you don't cut your fingers. Get them down as low and blunt as you can. 
I'm going to use a detailing cloth from Dollar Tree, which I'm going to cut into about four inch strips, I think. And then I'm going to be using this to wrap this frame to take that stiffness out of it. I want this to be a soft looking heart. So we're going to wrap this underneath. It doesn't have to be beautiful as long as you get good coverage and just glue this down on your frame. I'm trying my best to keep the shape of the heart because when you add bulk sometimes you can lose your original shape and I don't want to do that. I just want to make it a little bit thicker and more cushioned looking. So I'm going to try to put all of my glued parts to the back so that the front is nice and smooth. And you can do this any way that you like. Use your clips here and there to give you extra hand if you need it. For the bottom, I'm just showing you here. I slowed it down to show you how we're going to wrap the bottom. So you get a nice, clean, full coverage. Just like that. You can certainly stop this and back it up and watch it again if you need to. And then just glue it here and use a clip if you need to hold it down for a moment. I'm just pulling it up and just going to close that gap that is in the back. Next I'm going to take this fabric that I found at Dollar Tree around Christmas time. I've cut this into strips as well and I'm just going to start putting this on the top. So I want to put my glued pieces in the back. Remember keep all of your work in the back so that the front is nice and neat and smooth. I'm not going to pull too tightly on this fabric. It doesn't have any stretch but that's not a problem. But I want this to look kind of almost pillowy. So you can make some little darts where you need to to make this lay down because it doesn't stretch so you're going to have to fold it over. Put all that on the back though. Keep the front nice and neat. We're going to do the same process down here at the point of this heart that we did with the other cloth. I'm going to wrap around the back and then pull it around the front just like that. Add some glue and press it down. Wrap what you have left around the back, glue it down, and then you can start your next strip of fabric. Remember, glue it in the back. And you're going to go all the way around. You are going to have a little gap there on the bottom, which is not going to be a problem. I'm going to show you how we can patch that to make it nice and uniform. You're just going to take a little remnant and glue it down. And just so simple, just like putting a, pat, a patch on a pair of jeans, right? Okay, so now that's complete. And I like the look of this. I think this will be pretty for a farmhouse Valentine's heart. You could stop here if you wanted to, but we're gonna add a little bit more and I'm gonna show you how. So the hanger here is brown and I want it to look a little more blended a little more soft to continue with that soft look so I'm just taking a pipe cleaner wrapping it around the bottom part of that and then I'm going to weave it in and out of that loop wrapping it all the way around that plastic loop until I get back to the other side it's these little finishing touches that you do that really bring a little something extra to your projects and really give a more more high-end look you know you took a little extra time you did a little, just a little bit more work and really stepped it up. So see what a difference that makes? That's so cute. Now you can get little hanging sign like these from Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Walmart, wherever. I got mine at the thrift store and I'm just gonna hang it around the back. Look how you can straighten out your ribbon. Just put your scissors under there and pull it down and it'll make that loop come out. I'm just using my fingers to twisting on that ribbon that's already there. I don't mind that ribbon. It's fine. Pulling out the loops of that bow and fluffing it up just a bit. Now you can glue down your heart if it has any dimensions if you don't want the movement in there. It's whatever you choose. These little rosettes came from Dollar Tree and there are, I think it was at Christmas time, and there are brown and red and I love these. I know they have some foam hearts too that would work great, but I'm trying to use what I have. So a lot of things that you use at Christmas time or find at Christmas can be used also for Valentine's Day and maybe even 4th of July if you want to think of it that way. Lots of reds. So 
So just start stacking those hearts, I mean those uh, flowers in there any way that you like. You could use regular greenery here if you wanted to. But I'm trying to keep it really, really simple and rustic farmhouse looking. So just add the glue where you need it. And then I'd really like a rosette on the top, but you see how bulky this is on the bottom? What I'm going to do is take my scissors, cut down, don't go past the thread that's holding it together, but trim it all down around that bottom piece. Trim, 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 cutting it down and making it as flat as I can make it on the bottom without it coming apart. I'm going to add some glue and then press it down firmly for a minute or two until it is glued down and it looks cute up there. I like it. Now you just trim up, you know it's burlap so it does have little parts and bits that need to be trimmed and go ahead and do that and then you have this beautiful little simple wreath made from Dollar Tree things what do you think all right on to the next one I'm going to use a sign that I got at dirt cheap but I think it came from the Target dollar spot originally you can use any type of little rectangular sign that you want for this you can use one with the frame or without these are little scrabble pieces that came in a little bag and I got these from Dirt Cheap as well and the hearts I got from the thrift store. I'm going to use my antiquing wax of course and a baby wipe. I don't want a heavy finish so I'm not using a paintbrush and I'm not going to pour it right on there because I want this to be very light. So now I'm just adding that color with that white right on to the heart. Now I think on this first heart I put it on the front and the back and then it occurred to me that maybe it's not the best idea to put it on the back because that's whatever surface that you're going to be sticking down the glue is not going to want to stick on that wax so just keep that in mind and only do the sides that you'll be seeing and leave the other part alone i'm going to do that with all my hearts there was a little bit of paint on that one so i just scratched it off a little dot of green paint the more you put on the darker it will be you need to be sure that it's dry and show you just a slight difference in the chips. I went ahead and stained my chips very lightly also. Then you can decide how you wanna put your little pieces down. So you could do it on the bottom in the corner, you could do it in the center. Certainly if you do not have these little chips, you can use um, your Cricut if you have a Cricut machine and write Valentine's if you wanted to. Or you could do uh, stickers. Dollar Tree has a huge variety of stickers. You could use those instead. So I'm playing around to decide where I want to put these in here. There's lots of ways we could combine them. And I love the fact that my hearts are different thicknesses and different sizes and shapes. Okay, so I think this is what I'm gonna do. And in order to get my Valentine's word straight, I've just went and went ahead and taken my ruler here and made myself a light line where I can slightly overlap my letters when I glue them down. I'm going to take my hearts and start placing those back down in the frame. Finally found the way that I like the best. You can also get little heart pieces, they're little wood pieces at Dollar Tree, and they're just like the little ornaments that hang, but you can certainly use those, and you can also do stickers with this instead, or you could paint or draw, or again, use your Cricut, whichever one you want to do. Now I've got them all placed down, this is how they look. And so this frame comes with a hook on the top, but if you want it to stand, you can very simply take your Jenga blocks, I went ahead and stained mine, but left one side with no stain and just glue these down on the bottom. If you stand these up and place them on there, it's gonna make it more flat uh, and ensure that it is standing up at the right angle. I learned the hard way a long time ago, so let me spare you some, some aggravation. I wanted to add just one more little element. So I'm gonna take a thin red ribbon, and it's just a scrap that I probably got off of an ornament at Christmas time. I kinda hang on to them in a jar and I'm gonna make a heart just for this heart in the middle. Very, very simple. It's cute and small. There you go, what do you think? On to the next one. This little sign came from Dollar Tree and it is not in the Valentine section, but you'll find it 
These are some thrifted hearts that I have. They came off of another sign and I pulled them all off. Took the staples out of the back. Now I'm just showing you, Dollar Tree now has one of these little spatula tools. You can use these to lift these up without tearing apart your words. They also have staples, so be very careful and pull those out so that you don't hurt yourself. I'm taking some doilies. You can also get these at Dollar Tree. Mine were thrifted. And then I have a scrap of drop cloth that I'm gonna use to cover up an old sign. Not entirely sure where the sign came from. I've used it a few times. I'm gonna trim it down so that's a little more workable. You can trim it down even further as long as you have enough to overlap and neatly cover up your edges. So I'm just putting down my line of glue and protecting my fingers and pressing that down into there. I'm gonna pull it firmly and pull the other side. And then this is how we'll do the ends so they won't be bulky. You just cut at an angle at, from the sign underneath outward. And then you can just tuck that under almost like if you were wrapping a present or wrapping a gift you should still be in that mindset since christmas is just over with fold it over and glue it down they get nice crisp edges and nice flat corners okay so now i'm going to take my doilies and decide where i want them to go my projects from last year, if you've watched my mega video um, that I put out this year of last year's items, I use doilies as well. But this one's going to be a little bit different, and I really like it. Be sure you protect your surface when you're using your glue stick. These doilies are very delicate, and they have lots of holes, which means the glue will go right through the holes onto your surface. So just keep that in mind. You'll need to be wiping that up. Gently press these down. Firmly and gently press. You do not want to pull on these because you will rip them and then continue along. I like the way that it looks with the white and the red staggered, but if you like pink, you can certainly use more pink. I'm gonna use pink, red, and white in this sign. All right, so once they're all glued down, you're gonna take that sign, and thankfully, the glitter does not come off of these. I thought I might have to do some work, but I did not have to. Yeah, this was with the little girl stuff, like the kind of the preteen, things that's where this particular original sign came from you know the one with the love on it and then I'm gonna start layering on some of these hearts I decided to use the light brown and the pink rather than the dark brown I think it just looks better it blends better together and I'm just gonna start placing those down I've got a kind of got a pattern where they're a little bit toward the top little off center of the doilies that are underneath them but I like this layered look. I think it's sweet. It looks like little cookies on there, little treats. Okay, so I'm gonna take a piece of twine. You can use whatever you have. You can use ribbon, you can use jute. Tie knots in both ends. Put your backing on. If you're gonna be giving this away, be sure. Now mine looks terrible, but I'm just giving you some inspiration to show you how you can cover it, cover up all your seams, and then you're gonna just glue down your, your twine. And there's your little sign. That's so simple. Here's the next and my favorite one. It's also the last one. I'm gonna use this bundle of roses, and this bundle happened to have come in the things that were donated to me by my very sweet donator who gave to the channel. I'm gonna use some foam. I'm also gonna use my cutters. I use this thrifted heart basket that I have. It's about 12 inches across and probably 16 inches tall. I'm just gonna cut this and I like to use my metal ruler to do it and then break the pieces off so that they are underneath the level of that basket. I don't wanna be seeing that green poking out. Um, you're not gonna see it. It's a little bit showing, but not much. So I'm making sure that my green is where it needs to be. I'm trying to get an idea of how tall I need the tallest ones to be. And then keeping that in mind, I'm cutting them off. You can always trim up later more that needs to be trimmed, not a problem. Look how beautiful this greenery is. Look at the little rosebuds on it. I just had to take a minute and show you this. Stunning. They're so realistic looking. Okay. 
Now these just need to be poked down in here. I put the tallest one in the back. I want this to have kind of a dome shape. So I'm gonna do three in the back. The two on the sides are, you can see here what I'm showing you. They're kind of lower than the one there. There's another piece with a rosebud. And some of them have, um, it's almost like baby's breath or something white in there with it and it's really pretty. So come, coming outward and downward in the front, about the same height as the one in the back but more forward is where I put the next one. And then the same thing here, so we're working toward the front and continue to put your roses in there. Some people take the greenery off their flowers and I just don't like that look. Not for something like this. I want the greenery in there. Um, rustic is a big deal for me. I'm not into the modern thing, so um, I like to have that green in there. I love my pops of green. I love things to look realistic. Like you could actually find something like this in nature and then bring it into your house and do it. You know, I really like this. So I'm just adding a few more, just a little bit taller in the back, just to give it a little more. I had more roses to work with, so I'm fitting those in where I can fit them. I'm gonna put the last rose in the front, and then I'm gonna take a piece of greenery that I had left. I guess one of the flowers came off. I'm gonna put it on a pick, and then add it right down. Looks pretty, doesn't it? All angles, y'all, look at it at all angles. I'm gonna add that one last piece of greenery because we're not gonna waste it. And then we're gonna work on a bow to go right in that space. So this ribbon is from burlap.com. They got in touch with me and asked me if I would be interested in trying their products. And I am very satisfied with this ribbon. I can't speak to all of it. I haven't tried it all yet, but I can tell you right now, I love this ribbon. It is not wired. It has a frayed edge and it's a red and white stripe. Gorgeous and so easy to work with. Surprisingly, because a lot of ribbons that don't have wire, they're hard to manipulate and hold their form, but that is not the case with this one and you'll see. I really put this one through the ringer and made a stacked large bow and still had a lot of body in the ribbon. So continuing along, you saw the kind of bow that I made. I'm gonna leave that string in the back and just cut it off here on the bottom. I'm gonna do the same thing with the next one, only I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger because we're gonna have the smallest, a medium, and then we're gonna have a large one. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm working on the medium or the one that's gonna be in the middle and I'm tying these all with jute. You do not at this point want to be using a bulky, um, tie, a zip tie, because it's just going to be too much in the middle. Your bow is not going to sit the way it should, and you're going to have a hard time holding on to all of it. It's just easier to use a strong jute in this situation. So I'm making sure I have the graduation of size correct on my ribbon, and continuing around. Now you can't put the ribbon back on once you cut it off, but you can always add a little something extra if you need to. Keep that in mind. Don't be hard on yourself when you feel like you've made an awful mistake. So many things can be corrected in crafting. It is not a big deal and we do not sweat the small stuff here. All right, now we're gonna start assembling this beautiful shabby chic looking bow. I'm going to stack it and tie the first layer on. making sure it's not going anywhere. We're not gonna need that, so we're gonna cut that part off. Looking good so far. Now we're going to start thinking of the next one. This is just me struggling to turn the bow the right way. Also not a big deal, see, I fixed it. So we're gonna put that other one on top, wrap its string all the way around and leave it on. We're gonna double knot it, triple knot it, whatever makes you feel best. And then look at this bow. This is without even being fluffed. Oh, I love this bow and it's gonna be perfect for this basket. This one is going on my door this year. Go ahead and trim up your ends. You can do angles, you can do dovetails, whatever you like here, whatever floats your boat. And then we're gonna need a way to fix it and I'm gonna use a pick. I'm making a pick with some hot glue across the tie, a little extra piece of greenery 
wire here and then I'm tying it in so that it dries in there. Once it is completely dry and cool to touch, you can stick that pick straight down in that foam and then fix that bow back and look at this little beauty. I love this. It's my favorite one of all of them. Give me a thumbs up if you're liking this bonus video. Go ahead and do your finishing touches and fluffs. Y'all, today we're going to be using some ribbon. I'm going to use a variety. I like wired ribbon for these bows. So I've got a couple here from Dollar Tree in the thrift store and it's just a piece of scrap. Here's the sign we're going to use. You're going to need some greenery, whatever you choose. And we're going to use some roses or flowers of your choice in a few different sizes. You can use the wonderful ones they have at Dollar Tree or you can use thrifted ones like I'm using. And you know, I always show you a variety of stuff. Some of this I might not use, some of it I will use, and then we'll be adding to it. So we're gonna use this 14 inch square wire wreath from Dollar Tree, and I've just wrapped that with burlap. This is one I've used for many different projects in the past. We're gonna go ahead and remove the hanger and tag from the sign, and figure out where we wanna put it. So we could do it in the center, or we could do it off to the side. And I think since love is, the font is going this way, we're gonna go ahead and put it a little bit to the side. And I'm gonna start arranging my flowers. Now I intentionally put this wreath almost upside down so that the concave part is where the flowers are, so that it kind of sits in that little nook. And I think this will work, something like this. So you can just take a stem or some wire, whatever you choose to attach this. I left this part in here because the these are not strong enough to poke through the burlap. So what I have decided to do is cut pieces off of a floral pick that I already had, that I'd already used. These work really good for this. So we're gonna make a little horseshoe shape and then they will go right through that burlap to the back and then you can twist those clothes almost like a bread tie you would twist a bread tie so you twist it and then just press it down on the back so that it's laying flat just like that you're going to go ahead and start adding your layers i like the greenery in the back two different size flowers here and a little more greenery in between this is some really pretty boxwood that i got from goodwill Think it's appropriate for something going you know close to springtime because it's some a little bit of light green on there with the dark green almost as if it is starting to open up and starting to grow so you see how it's sitting down in that little that little area works perfect Then you're just going to keep layering down here. And I'm going to even up my stems, get those out of the way because we don't want those showing. And in order to keep the stems from showing all together, we're going to flip one of these around and then put a little glue on there and stick it down. Or you can use another one of those wires if you like. So I'm looking at my arrangement from all angles, like I always say to do, and I'm gonna add a little here and there until I get it the way I want. And to me, it looks like a little bouquet on the side, which is fitting. Flowers for Valentine's Day, right? All right, so this is how I wanted to do my heart. Again, I'm making sure I get it where I want it. Then I'm going to add some of these fuzzy stems on the back with some hot glue and a little scrap of paper. This is going to give it a little hanger so that it can easily be removed and I can use this wreath again for another project if I want to. 
kind of eyeballed it to see where I need my next attacher. And right there is going to be the spot. You can get your glue sticks pretty much anywhere you want. Right now I have a pack of Gorilla Glue sticks that I got from the thrift store. So that's what I'm going through right now. And I'm pleased with them. They work really well. But the cheaper ones also do a fine job. No problem. You can definitely get them from Dollar Tree in the crafter section if you like. Keep your spending down. Now we're just going to poke those through. They're not the easiest. Like I said before, it was kind of difficult to do the flowers, but just keep working with it and it'll go through here. Or you can use floral wire if you want to. That might be better. So I'm going to take this bow maker that I made and I'm going to start making my bow. In the beginning, I had three different uh, ribbons that I was going to use, but I decided in the end to leave off the ribbon that, that did not have wire in it. It's just floppy and for a bow this size, it didn't look very neat. So we're gonna just leave that off. Now these loops are about five inches, which would make it a 10 inch bow. But you can make yours as big or as small as you would like. You're going to have to twist in the middle to keep your pattern side on the top because that's the side you want to show. So that's what I've done here. You can see I'm pinching that, putting it down there, and then making sure that my loops are the same, twisting it in the middle. I'll leave the video in a card for you so you can see how to make your own bow maker if you would like to go watch that after this video. So I have two loops on each side and I have a short tail underneath and this other tail on the top. Now I'm going to layer with a bow that's going to be an inch smaller. Each loop will be an inch smaller so then I'm, this would be approximately eight inches and I'm going to do two layers. And since this is not printed, it's the same on both sides. It's much easier to do. You just keep putting it through there. You don't have to twist anything. Then we're going to cut that tail off. And there you have it. Going to take your tie and look, I used a piece of cord and broke it. So I had to get my stem and wrap it around there. Doesn't really matter what color you use because you won't see it. So if you got leftovers from Christmas, you can use that. I'm gonna dovetail my ends to give it a nice little finished look. You know how to do that. Cut from the outside upward, and then twist it. And make sure that you get your the printed side upward. You don't want to see the back of that. You want to see the front. And then you can start fluffing out your bow. And it's going to go right off to the side there. I'm going to take that stem and just that wire and just go right through that corner piece of burlap, twist it on and poke it through the back. Again, no glue on there means that we can use this wreath again, the form again for other things. So I'm just cupping under the edges to give a little more volume. And there's our pretty bow. I'm going to make this bow extend a little bit or appear to be extended by making some tails to put in the opposite bottom corner. I'm going to show you how you do that. You're going to take a piece of that white and red and then we're going to take another piece of the burlap as well. That's about 12 inches, maybe 14 inches. Dovetail your ends. It's just easier before you get started if you want to do that. If not, you can attach it and then do it. All I'm doing is putting those, layering those with the darker color on top, the burlap on the top. See, so I'm going to show you how that you just pinch that right in the center, just folded it over to make sure it's actually the center and then bend it in half. That keeps both of the pretty sides upward. That's what you want to do. Same thing here. Hold it over, walk your fingers toward each other, pinching it in the middle, and then kind of pressing downward. 
layer those up. Gonna get a piece of floral wire or a piece of um, the chenille stem like this. And you're just going to pinch it and then twist it so that you secure it in the middle. This is going to attach those two layers together and give you a little something to put a dot of glue on so you can put it down there in the bottom. It just extends that pattern through the wreath. So see here on the end, you just put it there on the bottom, tuck it underneath with a little bit of glue. You don't need a lot. I was running out in my glue gun, so it looks like I put a lot on there, but I didn't. And just attach that straight to those stems. So that's extending that stripe that's in the bow, that's in the wreath, that's in the uh, sign there, and on and through the end of the wreath. And I think it gives it a nice look. All right, so that large pick that you saw me have in the beginning, I'm going to cut that into little pieces and I'm gonna add some of these here and there. I think it needs just a little something extra. And then I wanted to add some up here to move that floral over to the other side. Give it a little extra something. So I have a little piece of the boxwood and just a little bit of that spray of flowers there. So go back through, trim the tails if you need to, uh, curl them under, flag them out, whichever way makes you happy, and complete your wreath. And that is it. Start with some doilies. They're paper and you get a big pack from Dollar Tree. These signs also came from Dollar Tree. There are two different kinds and I will be doing two different signs, but only one in this video. So be sure you subscribe so you can see the next one. We're gonna start by saying that I was very distracted this day and I could have removed the tag and the hanger at the same time, but my children were in the room running them up. So I did it in two different steps, but you know, not a big deal, right? Okay, so we're gonna take our doilies out. These are our paper doilies. They're the circular ones, not the hearts, but you use whatever you like. On this particular one, I wanted to use two different sizes of the circular doilies. Be sure that when you take those apart that you really get your layers undone because they will stick together and it will look like one piece and when you glue it, there will be a mess. So just be sure that you have one layer. Decide where you want to put it. Look at this glue stick. I don't know what happened with this. I've always used Jot and I've never had this kind of a mess, but look here, I'm going to fix it. Now, is that the epitome of a crafting mama right there? I'm making it work. That's right. It'll wash off, people. All right. So we just rub that around on there, and I'm just going to pat that down. It is overhanging the edge, and that's the way I like it. And that is done intentionally. Don't worry if you get a little bit that sticks out. If a very little bit of it will dry and you won't be that noticeable, but you just don't want to cover the entire surface with it. Then go back under the edges that still need to be stuck down and just run that around in there and gently pat it. You don't want to necessarily drag it. You might uh, tear those little delicate edges there. This was a big pack. I, I think there were 30 in there. I think I might have already said that but 30 in there and so this is going to be good for lots of projects. Now I'm going to take my sanding block which also came from Dollar Tree and just gently sand down and away from the edge. That's going to make a very clean edge and make it look like it was almost painted on there. Nice and smooth. I'm going to do this to all of them. If you don't have a sanding block, you could always cut this, flip it over, and use a rotary blade. I have not found one at my Dollar Tree yet. I am on the lookout. All right, so we're going to use these clings. You can put them on windows or doors, and we're going to place these down on this for decoration. Now, 
Obviously, this is not going to stick to a paper surface on its own, but we have a solution for that, the glue stick. So I'm just going to take my little protective sheet here. This is actually a cutting board from Dollar Tree. And turn that upside down and then just start covering the entire surface with that glue stick. And then place it down and you're all good to go. They have a lot of really pretty decorative window clings, all kinds of designs and styles. So if this isn't your thing, and glitter's really not my thing, but you know, it's Valentine's Day, so romance is in the air. We're gonna do a little glitter. And the bigger heart will go in the big one here. And then I'm gonna take the little, the little section that has the writing on it, and we're gonna put that in the bottom corner. I haven't had a problem with these bubbling or making a mess. They really lay down nice and flat. And it's uh, they're easy to kind of move around. If you don't get it in the right spot at, the, at first, you can kind of slide it just a little bit. So just go back under and glue down the rest of your edges that need to be fixed in position. So here's a simple bow. This is just a shoestring bow if you want to do something like that. But I wanted to be extra today. So I am going to make a beaded hanger. I'm going to use this piece of tape, wrap it around the end of my jute twine, which came from Dollar Tree. It came in the automotive section, I do believe, so you get a big spool of that. Then I'm going to take some of these Christmas beads that I had on my tree. I had several sections, and I have just cut it, and I'm going to repurpose it for this. So at first I was going to do just the red beads and it occurred to me, I think I have some pearl beads from Dollar Tree that will work that are the same size. And look at that. Same size and I think it looks really pretty together. So we have a red wood bead and a pearl bead and I'm just alternating. If you would like to count those, feel free to do that. I did not count those for you, I apologize. Use as many as you want to make your hanger as long as you would like. This is very relaxing. Okay, so we're going to tie a knot and it needs to be a knot that is thick enough that your bead will not slide back down the jute. So that's what I'm doing right now. Tying a double knot there. Move my things out of the way and do the same thing in the other end. There's a little slack in it and I am totally okay with that. See there? There we go. This is how long my hanger will be. Now this is the back side, and I'm going to glue it down with some hot glue. And a little piece of fabric that I had left over. It came from a Dollar Tree sign that I have taken apart. Makes a good little band-aid for my glue. And just put one on each side. And then of course you'll want to trim that off if there's anything that is overhanging. And I love that. Oh my goodness, do you like that? Would you have just used pearls or just used the red? Or do you like the alternated ones? Because I really like them alternating like that. Okay, so we're going to take a bunch of different types of ribbon that will match. So I've got red, polka dot, red, check. I have pink check. I have solid pink. I have a, a thin metallic uh, check. A solid, a solid this, a solid that. A, you can see what I'm doing here. And I'm gonna make just a little, I'm gonna use bits and ends of rolls. Um, I think I finally finished off two rolls of ribbon that I had, and there's some sheer ribbon in there as well. You're just going to randomly put these down. It doesn't have to be any particular order. You could have just grabbed the entire stack off the table if you wanted to, but I wanted to kind of play with it just a little bit. So you just put them all on here, make your little stack, it's usually best to have bigger ribbons in the back, smaller ones toward the front, because the small ones will kind of get lost in all of that bulk. And then we're just going to push them together in the center and take a piece of strong jute and give it a good double knot in the center. Double knot, three knots, whatever you do, but it needs to be more than one or you will pull it loose. So now what I'm doing is just pulling my ribbons down so that I have them fairly equal on both sides as far as length goes. And I'm going to be dovetailing my ends. You see there, I flipped that red one upside down accidentally. 
that's okay because there's red on here so that is okay so you're gonna do this all the way around both sides on the thicker ribbons I didn't bother doing this on the thin ribbons you probably couldn't have seen it anyway you wouldn't have noticed it if you have anything that you notice that is standing out um, that it's too long just trim it and see here I flipped that ribbon over a couple of times <laughs> And then we're going to attach it up here. It's gonna cover up the original hole from the hanger. We're gonna put it off to the side on the sun. And I love that. I'm gonna call that a scrappy bow. How about that? I think I've called it that before, but I'm not sure of the name, but for today's purposes, we're gonna call this a scrappy bow because I used some scraps in there. All right, now I'm going to trim off the back because I did not do it a moment ago. Flip it back over and give it just a few more finishing touches. So for the center, I'm going to use a felt sticker that's a little heart that I got from Dollar Tree. I used a little bit of hot glue and stuck it on there. Then I decided that that pink heart would fit nicely in that white section of the red heart. And since I have pink above and in the bow, I thought this would carry that color down nicely. And it sticks on there really good. You remember this truck. I was lucky enough to find this late in the season amongst some other things where it didn't belong. We're going to have to take a variety of ribbon. I've got some of this open weave, kind of burlap-y looking stuff. I've got some denim ribbon. This is unwired, but it's a stiff ribbon and it's got a little garden gate scene on it. It's a little bit of a white kind of rope design ribbon here. Some of this was thrifted, some came from Dollar Tree. I got this at the thrift store and this is a little bottle of jade acrylic paint. We're gonna take a variety of flowers and picks. Whatever type of florals you want. I wanted to do more of a spring type theme so this would transition easily. I'm taking a thrifted oval shaped, I think it's like a 14 by 16 or 18, if you can see here, wreath. And we're gonna start by working on this truck. So. It's just stapled on, the little tag is, so you just pull that out of there. We're gonna pop that off, and there's a staple underneath that needs to be removed so you don't poke yourself. So I'm using my little pliers here to just get right next to that and clip it off. If you do not sand off this glittery, textured Merry Christmas, it will show right through any paint you use. That includes chalk paint. So you need to get your sanding block, this one came from Dollar Tree, and go to town on it. You want to try to get that as close to the surface as you can, as smooth as you can. When I finished, I did have a little bit of texture left next to that uh, wheel over there on the S of Christmas, but it's not too bad. I think I pretty much covered it up. You're going to sand it down and then wipe the residue off. You don't want that red and gold to bleed into anything else. So when I did this, I thought, hmm, maybe I should use a base layer of white since we're using a light color. So I went ahead and took my chalk paint and started working. Now see, I have three hands, look at that. That is my son. He is helping me. He broke his arm and he was kind of feeling down in the dumps and he wanted to do something. So since he broke his left hand, he's still got plenty of good use in the right one and he's helping me. And I wanted to leave this in the video for him so he could see himself on YouTube. So give him a thumbs up. He did a good job, didn't he? Now I'm just gonna go back over all of the sides. This is kind of a dimensional item. So if you have this truck, you need to go over all the little nooks and crannies and get every bit of that red covered up. So just pick it up, look at it from different angles and be sure that you cover all the red. Careful not to get it on your black tires. You can repaint them if you want to, but you know, just being a little more careful, you can avoid having to do that extra step. I think I got these paint brushes from Goodwill, but you can get these sponge brushes from Dollar Tree also. And a little tip, 
You might want to use the ones that come out of the automotive section because there's more in a container than what's in the crafting section. So save yourself a little there. All right, so once I've gotten two layers of the chalk paint and let them dry completely, I'm going to go back over with that jade. I'm going to go over and do the same process all over. I'm using a, I'm not going to say a heavy hand with the paint, but definitely heavier than I used with the chalk paint because it's acrylic and this is going to be, hopefully one coat does it. And that's what I'm going for, one coat. So you're just using a combination of just kind of pouncing around. It adds more color. Um, it deposits more paint, so it's thicker. It's a thicker coverage. So just kind of pouncing around a little bit and then rubbing it on where you need to rub it on. You can see what I'm doing here. And then I'm going to cover everything that I had white with the green. And I love, love, love this color. My husband came downstairs and saw what I was doing and he said that it, it looked like an authentic color. It looked like a, um, you know, an old green. And I do have to agree. I think it's pretty. It's not your traditional colors, but that's okay. So I'm going to go back over with a black um, paint pen and just go over because these tires have red around the edges. I couldn't get a close enough look to show you that, but underneath that little tire hub there and around the edges of the tire, it was red, like a line of red. So I wanted to get that completely off of there. You could use a Sharpie probably to do this if you don't have um, acrylic markers or paint pens. I think it would work fine. You could also use a little bit of paint. This made it really, really easy. Okay, so as you can see, the truck's going to fit nicely uh, across this sign. And I want to put it closer to the bottom than the top. And now we're going to work on the floral section that's going to go underneath. And I've just picked some thrifted fern pieces as part of my greenery. And again, I don't really have a, I have an idea of what I want to do, but I don't have a firm plan in mind. So you're going to see me probably move some things around. All right, so we're using our non-traditional Valentine's colors here. And I thought that the blue would be really pretty. It also matches the blue in my ribbon. So I have the fern, the little white picks, the hydrangea in the middle, and then some blue on the sides there. We are going to move on to work on our pretty bow. You're just gonna take about seven or eight inches of that, overlap it on itself, really easy. You can see what I'm doing step by step. And then when you get two loops on each side, you can go ahead and cut it off. Then I'm going to take this ribbon and I don't know what happened to the denim ribbon that I had planned on using. It was days in between and I had been getting over a sickness so I don't know where it went so we're just gonna work without it I'm gonna do the same thing for this pattern ribbon but I'm gonna cut notches in the size little bitty notches like we're talking millimeters just so I have something to grip onto when I start fluffing out the bow so you saw me cut a little notch in one side we're gonna cut a notch in the other side and then I'm gonna wrap a piece of the jute cord around it pattern on top Turn it to the back, squeeze it tightly with our jute, and then hold it in place and tie another knot or two in there to hold it nicely together because we're going to do a lot of tugging on this bow to fluff it out. So you're going to pull the insides out and away from each other starting on the bottom and you're going to do the same thing on the top. Now the good thing about the notches in there is that it will help you pull those pieces apart and they will stand up a little bit better. It'll give them more, um, I kind of want to say freedom to move around. So there you go. And see nobody's bow looks good in the beginning. You just have to play with it. You just have to keep moving it around, see where you want it, see how far you want to fluff it, how flat you want it, how thick you want it. And then I wanted to go ahead and put a middle on here. The jute is fine without it, 
but I decided to go ahead and put a strip around the middle. So I just took a little length of that and I'm gluing it down and then I'm gonna trim off the extra so that you don't see it. And I think that makes it a little pretty bow. It's rustic, that's what we have in my house. And so I think it fits great into the decor, kind of farmhouse and rustic. Also maybe a little bit on the French farmhouse side, if you will. Now we're gonna make the tails. I'm gonna cut off, at the end of the spool, there's like a little, a dimple or a little, I don't know, unnatural looking edge, but we wanna cut that off because I want the ends of these bows, these tails to be curly. So I don't want anything to interfere with the pattern, with the direction that they're rolling in, the direction of the curl. That makes sense probably didn't but it did in my head i promise we're going to take some of the burlap and some of the pattern put the pattern on the top we're going to pinch them together place them on the back of the bow and that piece of jute that we had left we're just going to tie it very tightly on the back so now our bow has tails still going to look a little bit silly at first but you'll see you'll see what's happening in a minute Okay, now you put yours in the center if you'd like. You can put yours to the side if you would like. On either side, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to thread this pipe cleaner through my jute here and then use this to attach it to the wreath. Now, if you don't want your jute to your uh, pipe cleaner to show, you need to put it through the inner surface, not around the outside diameter of the wreath. So just kind of feed it through the vines there. This may be a grapevine wreath. I think that's what this is called. So you see what I did there, and then you're just going to pull it to the back, kind of give it a nice tug to make it secure, and then twist it and just tuck that back inside. No one is going to see this. This is not the type of wreath that you would hang on a glass door because you'll see all your hardware and you don't you don't want to see all that. This is the type that you would want to put on a wooden door or hang on your wall. One sided. So. I'm not going to glue my truck because I can just tuck it right in amongst the wreath, right in the vines, and it stays nice and secure just like that. And that way I can use that truck again for another project. I felt like it needed a little more something, so I've taken this other thrifted pick and I am just going to kind of place it amongst the fern there put it in the back of the fern and then twisted the pieces together. Like you would see it in nature. It all grows together, right? It all grows together in the woods, in the forest. They live happily together. And I'm gonna add a couple more blue here. Just because I had them, I went ahead and added them. And I'm loving the combination here. Blue is my favorite color. Green is my husband's favorite color. And I think this just is just gorgeous. It just fits my style beautifully. So dovetailing my ends. And then they don't look very curly, but they will curl. And I'll show you that shortly. So stick around. So I'm just adding a little bit to the bow here. I thought I wanted to bring a little of the florals up to the top. Have a little more going on up there and so I've chosen three of those different picks to put up there on top and tuck them behind the bow if you don't look for florals and ribbon at the thrift door store you really really should that's where I got this this little uh, garden looking ribbon there that's where I got that and most of these gorgeous picks because I'm not gonna spend a ton of money at the stores full price on anything I'm just not gonna do it so I've got some stickers from my old scrapbook days and I've just chosen a very simple love sticker. Use whatever you like. If you want a freehand, you can freehand. If you got a Cricut, you can put something on there. You do whatever you like. You don't have to put anything on there at all if you don't want to. But I think this is simple and it is pretty. I think I've said pretty about a thousand times already. Okay, metal ruler underneath. Put your thumb on it and pull out on that ribbon and it's going to curl just like you use 
the little curling ribbons at Christmas time for packages. I don't think people do that anymore, but they used to. And it will curl that thick papery ribbon. Isn't that great? But if you're on the bottom of a spool, then you'll be able to do this with yours too. What do you think? I'm loving it. I'm loving the non-traditional, just a hint of Valentine's in this. Welcome back, y'all. We're gonna use some items from the Dollar Tree. This was a fall sign, the little pumpkins. It had a stake, I pulled it off. These are some felt sticker hearts. And then we have a sign here that is just a fabric sign. So we're gonna cover up this farm fresh pumpkins on the tailgate. I'm just gonna take a little quick measurement here, just showing you, be sure that you measure it. Obviously my ruler was not in the correct spot. And then I wanna use the word love off of the sign, so I am going to cut this section off. I'm going to use the rest of the sign for other projects, so don't throw it away. All right, I'm trying to make a straight line here to cut this out so that we can fit it on the tailgate of that truck. Just gonna trim it down and don't be worried if you cut off the little, the little um, stitching thing there because you can fix that. I'm gonna fix mine. And I'm just trying to decide, did I wanna leave the red on? Did I wanna trim off the red? But in order to get it to fit in that tailgate area, I went ahead and trimmed that down. So there we go, we have a new tailgate. Now I'm going to take this glass marker pen that I got from Dollar Tree, which I love by the way, very good quality, and just go ahead and put the stitching back on this sign. I didn't measure it, I just kind of freehanded it. Didn't count or anything, just, you know, it's a craft. We don't have to be exact. Now you can't even tell. So now I'm gonna put something in the back of that truck to cover up all of those pumpkins. And these hearts are great. I decided to just go with the red and the white, and I'm going to start peeling these off and placing them down. It's okay to go ahead and overlap the little tailgate area there because you want it to look like they're sitting in the back of the truck, not floating above it. But you do what you want to do. Just gonna go along there and add them on. And one thing you should know about the white ones is that once you take the backing off, they're pretty sheer, pretty thin. So you may want to double up on those stickers so that you don't see what's underneath it. And it makes a, a bolder color, I think, when you can't see through it. You see there, I don't want to see that. So I'm just gonna double those up and they'll be fine. They'll cover up those pumpkins because I don't want to see pumpkins again until much later in the year, right? Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're just going to keep adding these and stacking and staggering these so the pumpkins are covered until I get as many on there as I want to put. I'm also going to go back, I think I lost a little footage, and add in some of the smaller hearts on top of some of the larger hearts just to give it a little more dimension. I love stickers. I have loved stickers since I was a little girl. Since way, way back in elementary school, I had sticker books and I had scratch and sniff and I had holographic stickers and puppy stickers. You know, if you were a kid in the 80s, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so we're gonna keep doing that. I'm gonna put some behind, some in front, gonna do some layering there. Again, it's about giving it some dimension and so that all your little elements will stand out. Now you see where I have added some layers there. And I've got the back of my truck bed looking like I'm spreading some love. All right, the stickers are overhanging a little bit. So to keep them from sticking on everything and pulling off, I'm just gonna go back and pull some of those backings off, just some little scraps and add those to cover that up. You can just use paper or whatever you wanna use, but this way it's not sticking on anything. Okay, so some of the felt has little fuzzies on it, and that's just what I trimmed off there. You pull off your little fuzzy pieces to make it nice and neat. And then now, I'm going to put the tailgate back on and see how it overlaps some of those. Now it makes it look like the hearts are sitting in the back of the truck. That is the look I am going for. So now I know where I'm going to put it, and I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of hot glue on there, some thin lines but enough to hold it in place, just in case I wanna use this truck again. Gonna center it as much as I can, just by looking at it, and place it down. 
Now you could leave it like this if you wanted to, put a hanger on it, hang it on the wall. But I'm feeling a little extra today, so I thought I might trim it out with a little bit of jute. But honestly, once I got the jute on there, it's so thin against the thickness of the that fabric sign that it almost disappears in there. You really can barely see it. So be really careful with your glue. It makes a mess if you get it over there on those felt stickers. That's what you saw me doing was just kind of pick that off. I got a little mess on the side. And for y'all who noticed that it was crooked there, that I didn't have a good straight edge, you're welcome. I've just fixed that for you. It would have drove me nuts, to be honest. Okay, so now I'm just gonna keep going around the entire border of this carefully so that I don't make a mess on all my pretty little hearts up there that I worked so hard on. Just keep dotting that along there. How's everybody feeling today? We good? How many of my subscribers have been sick over the holiday season and quarantine? I'd kind of like to know since we were so late in the year getting it. I mean, right before New Year's, I actually was coming out of quarantine right after New Year's. So I'm just kind of curious to know who all has been sick and bless your heart if you have. And I mean that sincerely, not in a snooty way. I feel your pain. Mm. Okay, so we're gonna add because I didn't like that it was just really not showing up that well. And I'm gonna add some of this yarn that came from Dollar Tree. So, so far, everything came from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to make my border here with this fuzzy yarn. I'm going to start always in the corner. It seems to be better for me to start in the corner unless you're planning on embellishing um, somewhere on the sides, then you can cover your seam. But if I do it in the bottom corner, it doesn't seem quite as noticeable. So as I'm pulling this along and placing it down, I'm trying to keep the twist in it so that it doesn't go flat. I'm trying to keep the texture. So you see how it's the pieces that are twisted together. I'm just trying to keep them twisted to make it look like a rope. Continue around your corner. Make sure that it is set up before you go on so you don't have rounded edges. And just tap that down right next to that jute. It's just snug right up to the jute. Again, make sure that your corner is in place. Just, you just press that corner down good and then trim it closely to the to the edge. I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue to tack that down and kind of twist it together while the glue is still wet. And that'll keep my corner in place. So now I want to add a little bow on here and I'm going to double up with a little red and a little white, both of these from Dollar Tree again, and just make up a, a simple little shoelace bow. This is probably mm, 14 inches maybe of um, yarn and to see this is just a really simple bow of course i'm distracted so i didn't tuck both of them in the loop at the same time but you you get what i'm doing here okay there we go and you can make your bow however big or small that you want to make it i think this is good you can place it on the bottom of the tailgate you can place it in the middle of the top you can put it on the side, you can trim the tails, you can leave them long. You do whatever gives you some joy. And you know how I am. For some reason, I always kind of favor the left-hand corner for my bows and my embellishments. That's just my thing for some reason. It looks good to me. So there it is, off to the side. Pretty little bow. And I think that the texture of the bow with the texture of the felt hearts is a really good combination. I'm gonna leave the backing on both of these stickers and I'm going to put a little hot glue on there, attach those together, just so it'll give them a little um, stiffness so that they don't, they wanna, I want them to stand up on the bow and not like curve down and disappear into that bow. Now I'm going to put a red one and a white one, the smallest sizes in the right corner of the tailgate. Felt like it needed something to balance the other side. And at this point, if you wanted to stop, you certainly could, but I don't wanna hang mine. I wanna make this a freestanding sign. So I'm going to use some tower pieces and some of these little square wooden pieces that come from the Dollar Tree crafting section. And I'm gonna make a stand for this. 
Now, because the wheels are narrow and I don't want my stand to show, I'm placing these uh, rectangle pieces long ways instead of side to side. And then I'm going to support those with glue on two sides of the square and press them right up against that rectangle piece and the sign. That's going to give it some additional support so that you can stand out on a table or a narrow shelf. Lots of people have those. Um, if you have the farmhouse style, you have those narrow shelves and this will fit nicely there. So you see, I just have it propped up for uh, the camera purposes, but you can just set that up on your table or wherever you like. If you work, you can put it on your desk. It'll be a cute little reminder to just let love rule. We're gonna start off with glue stick, of course. Gonna take some picks of your choice. I just have some eucalyptus here that from, came from the thrift store. I've got some roses and this heart pick that came from Dollar Tree. Here are some heart doilies from Dollar Tree in the Valentine section. This bag is a wedding bag, I believe, and it just came from the regular bag section in Dollar Tree. And this is a sign, Valentine sign, which looks cute enough as its own, you know, on its own. But we're going to fix it up, give you some options. So first off, we're going to choose which side of the bag that we want, and it's usually easier to do the side, in my opinion, that is flat and doesn't have the bend in it. So I'm just trying to take the bag apart a little bit. This doesn't matter if it tears. I just want to have a little bit easier access to cut a bigger opening. So I'm going to lay this out flat and trim out the section that I want to use. If you want to leave the sides on there to carry it all the way across, you can since there's a print on it, but I didn't want to do it that way. I've got another plan for that. So then you decide where you want to put your doilies and I am just going to put mine kind of staggered down the front of this sign. Well, it's actually the back of the sign. And I think I will put my bag picture right there in the center or close to the center. Okay, more problems with the glue stick. It's coming out really goopy. I don't know what's going on, but that's okay. It, it's easy to wash off. So I'll just use my hands where I need to to be a messy crafter. Now rather than going all over the board, I just want to make sure that I have enough to stick down and then I want to put it down to hold it and then go around the edges. Just lift up where it's not stuck down and just add your glue around those edges. That way you don't have a big mess on the outside. There we go. And then we're going to just do this down the front. Be sure that you make sure that your layers are thin, that you just have one layer and you're not picking up two. I have mine arranged so that they hang over the sides and I'll be removing that excess. So I have my trusty sanding block that was sent to me by one of my viewers. And I am going to just gently trim this off. I sped it up a little bit. Okay, if you have any pieces sticking up, just press them gently back down. Did you still have that glue on there and it's still a little bit damp? Find the placement of your bag. Go ahead and add your glue all over the back of your bag, all the way down, especially to the corners and edges, and then place that down. When I placed mine down, I did not place it on there exactly centered. That's okay, that won't be an issue because I'm going to use a border around there so it'll be all right don't discourage if you make little boo-boos along the way with crafting you can usually fix anything and sometimes they end up being the happiest of mistakes all right i've got some rope from the dollar tree i'm just going to use my pliers to cut it because it's very thick and i'm going to make a border around here this is going to give it some dimension it's going to look 3d and it's going to act as a frame so to keep it from unraveling, I've just put a little glue on the edge and then twisted it to make those strands stay together. If it's crooked, just go ahead and make your straight line. The thickness of this rope will allow you to overlap slightly onto that picture to give you a nice even edge if you need to do that. Be sure you put glue in that corner and hold that down for a minute so that it doesn't come loose. 
and it will keep its shape for you. You don't want to pull, you just want to guide it and lay it down. Don't pull it. I think this gives it a very nice rustic look and then the wood grain of the bag also does the same. Plus you have the romance of the little lacy doilies in the background. I just think it's really pretty and fitting for a farmhouse rustic decor. Just removing the spider webs from the glue. And then I'm using my little full nose pliers here to cut it and then trim it with the scissors. Add a little glue there, twist it and push it down and keep it from fraying. Now I'm just going to take this oak marker, this is a furniture marker, and just dot in the white that's under there because it was really standing out to me. Now it just looks like the background. We're going to make a little pocket on the bottom. It's only stuck on the sides, so you're going to wrap it around the back and then place it on the sides. Just a little line of glue there. So you have an open top and an open bottom. And I'm going to make a little bouquet to put on the bottom and it'll be removable. So I'm going to cut off a few of these heart picks and some of the roses. These are such a pretty color. They're a very pale peachy pink, I think. Really good quality for Dollar Tree. I don't care for the foliage that's on there, but you know, for what we pay at Dollar Tree, you really can't complain. We're going to hide most of that greenery anyway. So now just start making your little bouquet in your hand just like you would a regular bouquet. I'm going to tuck in my greenery. Greenery. I'm, <laughs> the word is greenery. Yeah. I'm going to put the green stuff amongst the staggered roses. we got different heights there just because I put them in my hand that way. And then you can put your pick in at this point or you can wait. I'm going to take a little bit of green Chanel stem, wrap that around the bottom, and then I'm going to take a little bit of the burlap ribbon, there it is, and wrap that around. So when it's removed, if you decide you want to remove it, it looks nice, finished, and neat. Plus, if you use the burlap here, it helps give it a little grip on the other piece of burlap ribbon, which, by the way, those pieces came off of a roll from Dollar Tree. You can decide which side you want to put your arrangement on. Since I usually go to the left side, I decided to put it on the right side this time. And see, it holds it nicely. No problem. You have the freedom to move it around. It's not going to fall out. Now we're going to make a bow. These Strips of ribbon are about two inches shorter than the one before it. So this is going to be a stacked bow. I'm going to put the largest layer on the bottom, then the next layer on top of that, and the next layer on top of that. Stack them. We're going to make a little loop to go in the center. So we're just going to take a short section, make a little loop. Watch your fingers. Glue goes right through this and it is hot. Thus the name hot glue. Okay, so we're going to put that right in the center. Take a piece of jute cord or whatever you have because you won't be able to see it. Twist it onto the back, pinch it in the center, and give it a good couple of knots going to hold it in place. So I'm folding it there just to make sure before I secure it down that my sides are equal. That's all I was doing with that. So now I'm just playing around with the bow and the wire in here helps it hold its shape. So that's that's really great with this wire, I mean with this ribbon. All right, so we're going to make the tails now by just cutting another length. That's about a 10 inch strip of ribbon, pinching it in the middle, folding it down. I'm going to dovetail it glue it on the back in the center of that bow, right where you tied it. Hold it for a minute or two. I edited that out. Be sure that you hold it in place, let the glue get cool, and then it'll stick. All right, so here I go with a, a heart, and I'm going to place this down in the little 
bouquet bundle. You can use one of these, you can use two of these, you can put them wherever you want. After Valentine's, you can easily remove those picks out of there. They're not glued in. I'm gonna take one of these rosebuds and a little piece of this eucalyptus and add it right to the top. A little bit of hot glue will hold it to the back of that bow. Nicely. Flip it over. You're going to make a little jute hanger. This is the way I do most of them. And I did not protect my fingers. We're going to use brown decorative shred some heart grapevine decoration pieces, ribbon from Dollar Tree or the thrift store, whichever you prefer, whatever you have on hand from the Dollar Tree. And this is a frame that I got from Goodwill. I did not pay $9.99 for it. It was originally from the at-home store. I paid by the pound, so I probably paid maybe $2 for this. They are, this is a 16 inch square decorative piece. It's a wall hanging, whatever you want to call it. Originally when I bought it, I thought maybe it was a picture frame, but because it has the clips on there, but it is not. The back is sealed, as you will see shortly. So a little goo gone is going to take this red marker off of here. Also go back over with some alcohol or some glass spray and clean your glass up on both sides. I'm going to cut away the paper backing. I'm just trying to clean up the edges a little bit. Then I'm taking my metal ruler from the Dollar Tree and bending up those little prongs that hold the backing in place. After I do that I use some pliers to pull those out. And this is what it looks like underneath. It's got a little bend there but that's not going to be a problem. I'm going to remove these. They are not stuck down on the frame itself, so that's a good thing. You use some of this white chalk paint. It's linen white. Shake, shake, shake. And my little Dollar Tree brush. And I am going to go over this entire thing. I just give it one thick coat and then put it in front of the fan to dry for a little while. Needs to be dry to touch because once you put the glue stick on there on top of wet paint it is going to make a mess so be sure that it is completely dry get around your edges too if your frame happens to have um, you know some painted edges there these are not all created equal some of these look like perfect heart shape and one of those looks kind of flat on top so I just picked the best three or the best two that I liked this is what that shred looks like you can use any color you like that coordinates. This is such a pretty ribbon. I'm going to make a simple shoe string bow here. And it is going to have two layers. So I'm going to use one of this one, the stripe, and then one of the gingham. Just got to kind of play around with it. Usually the bows turn out perfectly, but for some reason I got it twisted on one side. So I just keep fiddling with it until it's perfect. And then I want to dovetail my ends, which I should have been wearing my glasses because I was a little confused there. And this is not wired. The gingham ribbon is wired, but it's pretty thick. It's a good quality. It originally, I think, came from uh, Target. So it's a nice thick ribbon. Then I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the other ribbon. This ribbon is probably, I would probably say like a medium size because I want it to be something that doesn't completely bulk up the inside of the frame because it's going to be pushing against the glass if it gets too thick and too big. So I thought that this type of bow would be the perfect, the perfect solution for that. So now we are going to combine these together. 
The colors look really nice together, I think. Take this glue stick, use whatever kind you want. I happen to have got these on a very steep clearance. And the calendar page is too big, as you almost saw in that clip. Um, it's too big, but that's not a problem because we are going to sand it down. Now, if you want to cut, you have a cutting board, a steady hand, you could cut it. But I'm going to do the same thing I always do, and that is going to be to sand my edges. It's a little bit different because I have to be careful about the backing that is just below that. But there is a way around it. I'm using my wooden side of my wooden ruler to press down and to get the butt, the wrinkles or little bubbles or anything like that out from under there. So I'm just using a piece of heavy cardstock to go under the edge and to keep that sanding block from bumping against my the backing there that's underneath. It's a little bit different than what I usually do. I had to turn it sideways, but that's okay. It works just as well. And it takes a little bit of the gray paint or the gray ink off of the page, which gives it a white kind of aged look, which I like with my decor. You're gonna do this kind of gently all the way around and just pulling off where it's coming off. All right, and so this is how it is going to look. I'm going to attach these two bows together with a little piece in the middle. You can use whichever one you want, but I'm going to use the color of the top bow to do my center. This is going to bind those together, make them look like one bow. Whatever calendar page you use, that's what you want to match your ribbons to. But I think that this one is really pretty. I've made it for Valentine's Day, but it could certainly be used all year round if you wanted to. This bow is going to go right in the center top of that calendar page. I am going to make some little bows to go on my parts, and this is going to be a shoestring bow just like the other. Really easy. First time I did it, I pulled too much through, so I'm doing it again. That's all you have to do. Pull them down to make your little loops even there. Get your strings as long as you want them to be. I want to even mine up, make them the same size. And then a little bit, little bitty bit of hot glue. We'll hold those bows right down to those little wooden heart wreaths wreath would you call it a wreath it's like a tiny heart wreath find your placement a little bit of glue and put those down where you want them I'll put this one on didn't have it exactly where I wanted it I didn't have the flat side down they're usually kind of bowed on one side this one was so I had to scoot it around a little then I'm going to take my shred paper and put that right around the bottom just tuck it in there you can put as much or as little as you like. I didn't want a whole bunch. Now I'm testing it. Y'all excuse my lights reflecting there in the glass. There's nothing really I can do about it. And to put that back on, I'm just going to use some strips of foam board from Dollar Tree. Cut them in rectangles. And then for each corner. And then I'm going to use hot glue on the side of each piece that where it touches so on the long side and the short side of each one to hold it to the frame itself all right we're going to start with some picks that came from Dollar Tree, some roses, some hearts, whatever you like. I'm going to take a variety of ribbons, some I may use, some I may not. The wired ones are the ones that I prefer. This bag came from the regular bag section at Dollar Tree. I think it's a wedding bag. I usually use a um, 
glue stick, but I'm going to use hot glue today to put this on here. So you're going to start by removing your uh, hangers there, your, um, I don't know, the totes, whatever you want to call it, the ribbon. You're going to take that off, open up your bag, and lay it out. I think my frame is a 16 by 20. It was a canvas that I took off and used the frame. And then lay it down, get an idea of exactly how I want this to fit. And I like it like that. I like the coloring of the frame, the natural color, so I will not be painting it for this project. Now where I get it exactly where I want it, I'm just going to hold it down with my hand and start adding my hot glue by just flipping up a little bit at a time so that it is still centered exactly where I want it on that backing. Go all the way around the edges, top, bottom, and each side to make sure that it lays flat. Be sure that you are not making any, I don't know, lines, creases, or bubbles when you're gluing it down. You don't want to have a bunch of mess in there. You want it to be relatively flat. I'm going to quickly add some glue just in the top two corners and then put that back down on there. You can use clamps, clips, whatever, but you need something to hold this down because it's not flat and it will bow away and you won't have um, a nice closed seal. So you want to be sure you use some clips. These are clips from Dollar Tree in the laundry section. They work really good for these wider pieces. And then go ahead and go down adding glue where you need it along the sides and the bottom corners and put clamps on those spots too. We're going to use one of the ribbon hangers or ribbon handles and make a hanger for the back. That's all you have to do right there. We're going to get the most of our buck from this bag. So once we've got a simple little tie there, we are going to glue that on the back side. Found my center for my hanger. If you don't hang it in the center, it might go crooked on you and then it'll be kind of crooked on the wall. So. Just check on that before you put it on. And now I'm going to start on some embellishments. This is a wired burlap ribbon. I think it's a two inch ribbon. One and a half inch, two inch. It came from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to fold it over so that I have two loops on each side. See, count that, two loops on each side, folding it over on itself. There's no print, so we don't have to worry about that on this ribbon. I'm going to fold it in the center, and I'm going to make sure that the, the little gingham bow that goes on top is just a little bit shorter than it is. And I'm going to do, I think I have six loops on this one, three on each side. But it's going to be a little bit smaller than the one that's underneath because we're going to stack it on top. It makes a pretty little bow that looks, reminds me of a flower, I think. You can decide. We're going to cut that off. See how it's a little smaller? Now find your center. And then you're just going to use your scissors to make little cuts through the wire on each side. Little bitty cuts. You don't want to cut through it because you'll cut it in half. Do the same thing here on the bigger ribbon. That's going to give the jute string that you use or your floral wire, whatever you decide to use, something to grip onto. And it makes it easier to keep your bow in one piece while you fluff it out and get the shape that you like. You can see how it sinks into those little cut spaces. That's what we want it to do. Good, tight, double knot there. And then you can begin to pull and twist your pieces, your loops, out and away from one another. Do that on both sides. So we have sort of an X in the back with the two on each side. And on the top, we have six little pieces. All right, we're going to make tails for the ribbon by using whatever length you like of a piece of burlap and then also the pink and white gingham to go on top of that. It's going to be layered. 
just like the bow. You could always leave this part off if you wanted to. But I think it looks wispy and romantic, so I'm going to add it. Pinch it in the center and fold it over. Same thing with this one, pinch in the center and fold it over, and that gives our tails. We're gonna turn it around, place it in the center of that burlap, about mm, half inch or inch up, and then make sure you're getting both pieces in there and tie a few knots to hold it down. Go ahead and trim off your excess, whatever you have left there. And you can start to see how this pretty bow is going to look. It's going gonna, it's gonna to need some fluffing, but we have a little more work to do. Decide if you want it in the center or on the sides. Add some hot glue. And you're going to grab that bow, place it right up there. And then you can take a clamp and hold it down. Make sure that it stays nice and flat. Very, very thin, thin line of glue on your ribbon against the frame and onto that upper ribbon to hold it in place. And it does remind me of a little flower. Isn't that cute? It's such a simple bow. Use whatever color ribbon is going to match the bag that you choose. They have a variety of gorgeous, gorgeous bags. So don't just look in the holiday section or for Valentine's stuff. Be sure that you go to the uh, back of the store, wherever they keep their gift bags, and just see what you can find. I, I really think these are part of a wedding variety. So here are some Valentine picks, just little glittery sequined hearts. I chose white. They also have pink and red, I believe. And we're going to put that right in the middle of our flower bed. These are little pit berry pieces that I had left over from Christmas. Pretty sure you can still get them now. And I wanted to make some little flyaways with this, so I'm just going to take my pencil and twist this around and make a little curly doodad. And I, now I have two of them, so I'm going to put one on the top right under the bow in the glue and I've added some hot glue to that. I'm gonna add a little hot glue on this one and tuck right under the bottom part. I think this is just too cute. I love this bow. It's gotta be one of my favorites. And there you go. We're gonna use this little canvas sign from Dollar Tree. Just got some scraps of burlap. You know, I always pick up things that I might use and I might not use. So, got little bits of this and that all over. Got some thrifted ribbon and some Dollar Tree ribbon. A little bit of Christmas mesh. And this is a wire wreath form that I got from Dollar Tree and I've just wrapped it with burlap. I've used this over and over again so you can see the, the glue on there. That won't matter, it's gonna be covered. This is a 14 inch wreath, as you can see here. All right, I'm gonna show you how to make these little mesh ruffles. And they're really just tubes. We're going to use 10 inch pieces and we're going to roll them up. Rolling, rolling, rolling. They're gonna be about the diameter when you get to the end of probably a quarter. You can make them tight, tighter if you'd like, whichever way you wanna do it. Just using my clips from Dollar Tree to hold those down while I get the other two pieces ready because we're gonna have three pieces in each bundle. Keep the process, tucking and rolling. And we're going to pinch them together. You can use any color that you like, any color you have that coordinates with the little canvas that you choose. And I did not measure that canvas, but it's pretty standard for what they have in Dollar Tree. Okay, so this is what you're going to do. We're going to make several of these. I'm taking these red pipe cleaners and I'm going to be cutting those in half. 
and I'm going to start making my ribbon bundles. So you can see here, these are eight inches of ribbon. And we're going to do one for each of those little bundles. You can do a few more or you can do less, whichever one you want to use. This is just what I've used. They're also the same size as the red. Now I'm stacking these up and folding them over so that I can dovetail the ends all at one time. If the ribbon's not too thick and you've got good scissors, this makes your process a little bit quicker. I'm going to do it on both sides. And then I'm going to do the same thing with these. You certainly don't have to. It's a thinner ribbon. But I wanted to do it. I think it's cute. I like the look of it. Now we're going to take this Christmas ribbon that I got from Dollar Tree. I had left over for Christmas time. And we're going to be cutting the same amount. I think we had five. Then I'm going to start with my little bundle. Give it a twist or two. I'm going to start my little bundles. Put them together. Squeeze them together in a center. Wrap that over them and twist it in the back. And they're really cute once they're all fluffed out. Now the smallest ribbon there does not have wire in it. That is not a problem. It's on top. It's small. It really doesn't need it. It'll stand up on its own. We're going to do the same thing with the next one. You can see exactly what I'm doing. Crossing it over. And then twisting those around to the back. Okay, now we want to find placement of our cute little canvas and find a way to attach those. So instead of hot gluing it onto the frame, I'm just going to use my little pipe cleaner and a little scrap of paper to make something to attach it with. You can use wire for this, you can use floral wire, you can use whatever you have for this. So pipe cleaners can sometimes be a little bit uh, limp and they are sometimes hard to feed through that burlap uh, It just depends and the wider the weave on the burlap the easier it is to get these in So you just kind of fool around with a little bit until you can get them fed through and make sure that you are wrap Wrapping it around one of the wires on the inside and I'm kind of aiming for that middle Wire and just feeding that through there and then this will be on the other side of the metal ring Pull it tightly or I'll say that I'll pull it snugly. You know, I'm pulling thing too tight. I don't want to distort the frame or the burlap by getting it too tight. And then I did the same thing with the bottom corner and just attached it down. Now we have to find a way to get these bundles on. And I'm decided that the stiffer floor wire would be the thing to use. That is a, a stiffer one. It's a heavy duty, kind of a heavy duty wire. So I make it like a bobby pin or a little hair pin. Put it right over the center and then just twist it up on the back and it will stay for as long as you need it to stay see i turned this one a little bit sideways you will have some freedom to move it around just a bit because we didn't use hot glue so that makes it a, a good way to keep your options open if you want to change this around a little bit so there are all the little pretty bunches on there and we're down to the bottom and you can begin arranging your little, the little tubes of mesh and the bows. And pull that wired ribbon out, kind of curl it over your finger or bend the wires so that it flares out a little bit. And separate the layers so that you can see each piece that you have there. See that blue ribbon will stand up there for you nicely. So I decided I wanted a little extra something in the center and I had these little pearl beads left over from Dollar Tree. So I wanted to test them out and I think they're going to look cute. Get your finger protectors on so you don't burn yourself. So we're just going to put one in the center of each one of those little bundles. See, just a little glue. I want to fix it where I don't see the hole. So it looks like an actual pearl in there. And I have some of these little hearts that came from a pick from Dollar Tree in the Valentine section. And I think I want to add those on there. 
because those little llamas look like a cute little couple to me, I thought two little hearts would be very cute. I'm going to layer on a felt heart sticker. These also came from Dollar Tree. Just going to kind of put it, eyeball it in the center and just place that down. These are very flexible. They're fabric, so you can kind of mold them to the shape of what you have under them. I've gotten a lot of use out of this one bag of felt stickers, so it's worth your money for sure. Okay, so I decided I wanted to add a little extra something, so I'm just taking one little tube. That's a 10 inch tube, just rolled it up like with the others, and then I'm gonna layer the ribbon on top. This time I'm not using the metallic red. Twisting them together with a little floor wire, dovetailing my ends. So this is going to pull it together. We're going to make the sides similar, or at least coordinated. We can say that much. Now this wire is going to hold down your hearts, and at some point, since they're not glued down, you can remove those hearts if you wanted to keep them up on your wall after Valentine's Day. Easy to remove. I love to recycle and use things over and over. It's the easiest way to stretch your dollar. There you go. What do you think? So cute. One last pearl to go on that bow and we're good to go. Seriously, this may be one of my favorite wreaths. I probably say that for all of them, but this is so darn cute. And it gives me so many ideas for options and possibilities of things that I want to do this spring. So be sure if you have not subscribed that you do subscribe. Handy dandy glue sticks. Gonna use some ribbon. There's two coordinating ones. I'll show you which one I use in a bit. They came from Dollar Tree. And these are some of the tower blocks from the toy section of Dollar Tree. This is a wedding bag. It came from just the wall that has all sorts of bags on it. It is matte on one side and the other side has a metallic gold. And then I'm just using the sign. Sometimes you can find them at Dollar Tree. I got mine from the thrift store. It's been used before for other projects. As you can see the, the marring there. It is 12 inches by 16 inches. So you can use anything you like for this. You can also use a piece of foam board and just cut it down to the right measurement. So I'm just showing you here, four inches and 12 inches is 16. Cut out around the edges of the picture. I've already measured, so I know how much I'm gonna need. Just be careful with this. I'm doing it in fast motion so you don't get bored with it, but I was being quite careful about cutting this. Then you wanna fold up, cut off, and remove the bulkiness from this top edge. You're gonna be gluing this down so you don't want all this extra bulk on the top. You want it to be as flush as possible. So just make that look neat, pull those pieces off and then trim it up. So I'm getting an idea here of where the picture will be by just folding and creasing a little bit. See, I can you can see the crease lines on there. And then I'm gonna apply the glue onto this chalkboard sign. Get good coverage, get all the way around it. You don't want there to be any lumps. You want it to be fairly even and be sure you get your corners and your edges nicely. If any little blobs come out, you can just rub that in with your hand because it will wash off very neatly. Okay, so we're gonna put that sign down on the bag, right back where those creases were. And I'm going to take this hanger off because this is from another project that was hanging in the other direction and we won't need these anymore. You can always paint or cover the back if you don't want it to show, but I wasn't bothered by it. It will be against the wall. No one will see it. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just going to use my wooden ruler here and start pressing the creases out. Now, the texture of the bag is not the same texture as like a calendar page. It's thicker and it almost has like a, I don't know. It's hard to explain. The texture of the bag is just different and it's a little bit thicker. So. Um, it's stronger, so that's a good thing. Whenever you get a lump or a bubble, just pull your edges up. If you use a glue stick, that's the beauty of it. You have time to work with it. Now I'm gonna take my block here, my sanding block. I had to get a new block because it, the thickness of the paper didn't wanna cut through as nicely as I would like. Um, not a problem, I had some nearby. So you're just going to file this away and downward, and it's gonna make you have a nice, smooth, finished looking edge. Okay, 
So here we go. It is glued down, it is sanded, and if there are bubbles that remain, just keep working and pressing those down. I used Elmer's school stick, uh, glue stick, but you can use Dollar Tree or whatever kind you like. I'm going to make a top and bottom border, and I'm going to use these little blocks to do that. You're going to need to lay these out first to see where they go and then start gluing those down because I didn't pay close enough attention when I did it and it has more overhang on one side than the other. I could peel it off and redo it, but the point of the video is to give you inspiration so you do it the right way. Be sure that you do it the right way and whatever makes you happy. You could go down the sides too, but I didn't have enough the size of this. There wasn't, um, they would have left a gap, so. Just the top and the bottom. You could also paint these blocks with chalk paint or acrylic paint. You could spray paint them. You could use some type of a stain on those if you wanted to. Or you could just do like I did and just leave them the color that they are. See, it's a little longer on this side. I'm not sweating the small stuff. We don't sweat the small stuff around here, do we? No, we don't. Okay, so there we go. There's our little border and it is fastly glued down. I have two different ribbons that I like. I can show you here that they both match the bag. So if you find this bag at Dollar Tree, you can find these ribbons. These are not in the spring section. They're just in the regular ribbon section. They're burlap and they are wired. I decided that the pink is the one that I wanted to use. We are going to make a little bow here simple little bow, make a loop, then you're going to make the tail. I'm going to pinch the center of the tail and then I'm going to pinch the top of the bow straight down onto that. That's what it will look like. Get a piece of jute or whatever you have to tie with. Any little scrap you have laying around would be okay too. I think this matched okay. So there we go. Tie a knot or two in there so that it doesn't come apart when you try to fluff it. Fluff them out so you can get an idea how it's going to look. Cut off little dovetails in the ends or you can cut them at a slant, whatever um, you prefer to do and you can make the tails longer if you would like. You can keep them short like I have on mine. Okay. And there we go. Very, very simple bow. Cut your excess off. And then we're going to decide where we want to put this pretty little pink bow. And I think the center will be good for this one. Now we need to think about how we're going to hang it and I'm going to use this wired jute to make a hanger for the back. So I'm going to decide where the middle is, kind of straighten it just a little bit. I'm going to turn it over, making sure that you're on the, the top, not the bottom. And this is how I make my little crafting band-aids, if you want to call it that. Just cut some scraps, put your glue down, put the end of your jute wire in there, a little more glue, if you don't have enough, and then you're just going to put your little piece of paper right over the top of that, and it will hold it down nicely, just like a band-aid. Now we have our hanger. We're going to place our perfect little simple bow here. I think the bow is appropriate because it doesn't take away from the gorgeous picture. So put that in the middle. And there you go. There is your Valentine or spring or wedding or little girl's room, whatever you want to call it, sign. I think it's very pretty and I, I like the pastels and I love the blue background. Okay, we're gonna start off with this Be Mine canvas from Michaels for $24.99. So, I'm gonna take a piece of white tissue paper 
and I'm going to cut it down to fit it on top of a piece of cardstock. You want to try to get this smooth and wrinkle free so that it will go through your inkjet printer without any hang ups. So this is how it looks so far. You just choose your little what you want to print out and print it. For this particular project, if you didn't have a printer, you could also use a page out of a book maybe that you already have or you can use a coloring page and just color that up or you could also use tissue paper or anything like a sticker you could use that too so i'm just using a white like a shadow box that i got at the thrift store but you can get these at craft stores and you can also get something similar to this at dollar tree so with the tape still on here just to make it easier to handle i'm just going to start cutting these into pieces while I make a decision on which one of these I want to use. I knew when I saw this on the website that there was no way I would pay $24 for this. And I knew that we could make something just as nice on a budget. So now we're gonna use this plaster chalk paint and we're gonna paint over the box. I'm gonna paint all of the surfaces on the front and then on each of the sides. And this is just so when I put down my white tissue paper, it's going to blend in. And I didn't want a stark white. I prefer this creamy color. So that's what I'm going to do for it. But you can use whatever you have. You can also use acrylic paint. But this chalk paint is matte finish. And the tissue is going to be a matte finish so it blends in nicely. I'm also going to use two of these little Christmas tags. And all right, so I'm gonna get this a little more manageable and just kind of cut it in a little circular shape around here. That way I'm not having to deal with any corners and I just find when I'm using Mod Podge, if I cut things in a circle or with rounded edges, I have less trouble with the corners trying to peel up. So that's my personal choice, but you can do this however you like. I meant to mention earlier too, you could also use a pretty napkin to do something like this. That would be very nice. But since there was a bee on the original one, I was inspired to make my own bee and put down on my box. So now I'm just painting on some matte Mod Podge and removing the little brush hairs when they fall out. I'm just gonna gently place this down on a thin layer of Mod Podge and then go over the top of it with my finger just to smooth it down gently. And then what's left on the brush, I'm gonna go ahead and go around all of the edges and the border and then work my way onto the inside. And that will push any bubbles out and make it nice and flat. It's gonna blend in nicely and it almost looks like it's hand painted and I absolutely love that. I'll try to grab that link for you where I got these from and put it in the description box because these were free. So, so far, I already had the box, I already had the paint, I had the printer already, the tissue paper I had from Christmas time, I already had the Mod Podge. So far, I've done this for free. So, let's see what else we can do. Now, for a little bonus, I'm going to do these little Christmas tags. They're not part of the dupe. I just wanted to go ahead, since I had such cute little bees, and make a little matching, um, coordinating tags to go along with it. And you could use these like on your tear tray or you could use them hanging, you know, in a book, something like that. However you want to use these for decor, there'll be great little extra pieces that will match the little box there that we did or the shadow box. They used a canvas, but I used a, uh, a shadow box, but you can get the little canvases at Dollar Tree also. So you need to let those dry, of course. Now you can use big stickers on here to say be mine, and of course I'm missing a, an E there, but I decided not to use those anyway. And I'm using some of these little wooden letters. You can get something similar to this at Dollar Tree. I thrifted mine. And then you can either paint them a color that coordinates if you would like, or a Valentine's color. You could do red or whatever you like. But I'm gonna use a furniture repair marker because I like to use these for stain and I have a rustic home if you are new to this channel that you might not know that about me but I have rustic farmhouse decor in my home I live in a cabin and uh, it's a log cabin and I like to try to keep it real in this house I 
It would not look right with a modern farmhouse, so I try to go with the flow and go with what we have already in the house and this type of decor just matches and it makes me happy. It's nice and cozy and woodsy and I love that. I love that about rustic decor. It's very homey, it's very comfortable. So you're just gonna go around the inside, the outside, all over. It's not necessary to waste your paint on the back um, and then let it dry. It just takes a moment to dry and then use the smallest amounts of hot glue. Now don't worry if you get some strings of glue here because I'm going to show you a way that you can remove that quite easily. You clean it up and make it look high end. So B and then I'm going to spell out mine. Now on theirs it was actually painted on the canvas it appears but I wanted to use something raised and I think mine looks even better. What do you think? And the fact that mine was free makes it even better of course. Now I'm just going to use my little Cricut tool here and just pull those little strings up once they dry it's easier to remove. So theirs was $24.99 and mine was free. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to those little tags there and I decided to add an X and an O on the bottom of this little B tag. So I did the same thing. I stained it, but I used a darker stain. I'm just gonna use the smallest amount of hot glue to put these on the bottom of the tag. Very cute, X and O, hugs and kisses, or kisses and hugs, whichever one. Now I'm gonna overlap these tags near the top very easily. You can still see my bees, I think this is very cute. I'm gonna use some jute, and I have a jute little um, box that I roll my jute out of. I could just pull it and cut it when I need it. And I'm gonna thread it through there, tie a little knot so that it is nice and long. You could use this as a little bookmarker if you wanted to. Or like I said, hang it on your tiered tray. If you have one of those metal trays with a knob on the top, this will hang perfectly off. Okay, on to the next one. This is another Michaels inspired canvas wall art. It's the little plaid heart. We're going to use one of these large crafter square canvases from Dollar Tree. Some of this red and black checked paper. Well, it's vinyl from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna take a big piece of that. It's still on the backing. If you're new to Cricut, always leave it on the backing here. I'm gonna roll it and burnish the heck out of it so I don't have any trouble. Then I'm gonna print out my heart and I did slice a word in that heart. So now I'm just gonna pull that out and I have love right in there. How simple is that? So easy, so, so easy. I've got some transfer paper here. I'm going to cut a section off that is workable for the size of my heart. Pick that up and drop it accidentally. Not a problem. Remember, we don't sweat the small stuff. Okay, so I'm just going to lay that down so easily. Lifting that piece of transfer paper up, press that down, making sure everything sticks nicely. I want all of my sticker or my transfer there to stick onto that transfer so I can pull it off and move it over easily. Don't you just love this part? The final reveal, I love this part. So I'm just peeling it up and it's it came off very easily. Now I don't know how long the Dollar Tree vinyl will last, but I'm very pleased with it so far. So I just peel that off. I'm just going to gently kind of eyeball it and then let it rest very lightly on the top while I measure to make sure that it is straight, that both parts of the heart are straight and even on the top. And they are two and a quarter, two and a quarter. And then I'm going to press from the inside out first. And I'm going to grab my little tool and burnish it down again, making sure that I am pressing my vinyl down onto my canvas board back there. Now this is not exactly the same plaid. This is more of a check than the plaid, but I think for the fact that I had all of these at my house already, yeah, I'll take this free item any day over what the other item cost. This was the easiest one. So easy. I hope you can try to do something like this. It's very, so simple. Now you can either use it as a leaner or you could make a little hanger for it. 
just a short length of jute here across the back. I find if you use a hanger like this, then you can move it back and forth on your nail or hook, whatever you're hanging it on, so that it is balanced and even exactly as you want it. If you use just a loop, sometimes if you don't get it centered, it won't hang right. Okay, so theirs was $30.99, mine was free. Next one, another Michaels inspired hanging canvas, $34.24. All right, look at this cutie. I printed this off, it's not exactly the same thing, but I like it. Also, I might add that this one is quite a bit smaller. If you look at the picture, it shows theirs hanging behind a chair and it's probably twice this size. But for the same type of look on a smaller scale, and again, I didn't have to pay anything for mine. I already had this stuff at home. I think this is a really good option. I'm gonna use my little cutting tool here. This came from Dollar Tree. It comes in a three pack. I love this, these things. I use them all the time. It's like a little razor and you just push when you need another length to come out and cut it and then it retracts back into the thing. I drew my little marks here and then I'm making lines. I kind of clip into the edge so I know exactly where to cut it on the other side. I'm firmly pressing down on the sides and then on the front and the back and I'm just going to gently rock back and forth and apply some pressure until the handle pops off. Just like that. Same thing with this one. That one was even easier. I'm going to take a, this is part of a sanding tool, it's just a sanding paper, and I'm going to just go back and forth and just slightly rock the edges on this stick. That's gonna give it just a little bit of a curve and it'll be nice and smooth so there's no splinters and it'll give you a nice finished look. Not bad, right? Same thing with this one. This is very easy to do. You could use your sanding block if you have one of those from Dollar Tree. All right, so once you get that the way it needs to look, we're gonna go on to coloring it. You can paint yours, you can leave them natural, you can do what you want, but I like to use my antiquing wax and a damp baby wipe. I'm just going to lay that color on the stick and rub it in and be sure that you get your ends. It's not necessary to color the back and on the bottoms and the sides so that it's nice and finished because like I said, the idea is to achieve a high-end look and not have to spend a lot of money doing it. And making sure that you get all your little details covered here is going to give you that nice look that you want. People will come in your house and not know if you bought it or if you made it. Okay, so once they are dry, because you don't want any of that stain to transfer over onto your pretty white paper, just checking here to make sure that I have it exactly how long I want it and where I'm going to place it down. And then for me, it's easier just to go ahead and put the glue on the stick and then turn the paper over and put it down. I feel like I can get my measurements more exact this way. I can see exactly where I'm putting it and it will be perfectly straight. I'm gonna do the same process with the other end just putting some glue down. Make sure you don't get too close to your edge because you don't want that glue to pop out onto the front of your sign. I'm just pressing it down to make sure that it is stuck down nicely. And then all we need now is a hanger. So of course, you know me and my jute. I'm just gonna pull some of that jute out. You could use a pretty ribbon here. You could use colored jute. You could use a different type of maybe baker's twine would be pretty here if you like it. Whichever way you want to do it. But I think my inspiration piece was um, a jute string. So that's what I am using here for mine. I love the little vintage kids. I remember Valentine cards and I remember getting them and the little retro look. Really cute. Very nostalgic. So there's my little cuties. Theirs was $34.24 and mine was free. Now look at this. $64.50 for a pillow cover from Pottery Barn. Nay, nay, I say. Okay, so I already had that fabric. I already had this 
piece of velvety cord. I'm going to go ahead and fold this over so that I have 18 inches on each side or 36 inches total across. Then I'm going to cut them down. So the size of the pillow will be 18 inches. If that made any sense at all. Okay, so I'm going to use my hot glue because this is a decorative pillow. I'm not planning on putting this in the washing machine or doing anything too fancy. Certainly, if you want to try this and make it something that you keep for a while, go ahead and use a fabric glue or go ahead and use your sewing machine and sew your edges down. I'm going up about a half an inch up and putting my stream of glue down and I'm going to do that on both sides and I'm going to do it about two-thirds of the way on the third side that is loose and the fourth side is where we folded it so you don't have to do anything there. I love this fabric. I've used it on several different projects and I still have a good bit left. Be sure you protect your fingers and you can get these little protectors from Dollar Tree. Okay, so once you've gone around and you have that opening there, you're going to put your hand down in there and pull your inside out. Go ahead and put your finger right into those corners. If you need to, you can clip the corners before you flip it and it'll give you a nice crisp corner. And then you can, it, you know, if it bothers you and you need to press it, you know, you can do whatever you need to do. But for me, like I said, this is decorative. This is something that uh, I'm just not going to be fussy about this. So you can see up there to the left side is where it's open. Now I'm using a yellow marker. I don't recommend that you do this. I did this so that you could see this on here while I am placing my piece of yarn down. I'll get the words out in a minute, girls. Work with me. And then I'm going to write it one more time because that's how it was. Now, theirs was embroidered from Pottery Barn, but I'm going to get the look without actually doing embroidery. And all I'm going to do is take this beautiful burgundy or deep red color. I'm going to carefully take my glue gun. I recommend that you use a detailing glue gun or something with a very fine tip so you don't have glue squishing out all over the place. Take this as inspiration and you do a better job with it than I'm doing. But you continue around just like you would if you were writing the word in cursive. So just like I wrote it, I want to follow the same curves and twists and turns with the glue and the yarn. So I'm just pressing it down gently. I don't want any glue squishing out like I said I don't want a big mess here and you certainly do not want a big mess if you want something to be out in the public where people can see it so just like that add a little bit where you need it now if you are not in a rush and you know I had to in order to get this video done for you I needed to use a shortcut you can always use Certain types of glue sticks are for fabric, so you could use that. You could use something like that. I think it's called Stitch Witchery, or there's some type of a fabric glue that you can use that's in a, a bottle with a tip on it, so you can get a fine line. You could use that instead. If you trust yourself to do this without writing it first, you could definitely do that, and then you would have no marks. There are also markers and pins that you can get um, in the sewing section of stores that is disappearing ink. So you could try that if you wanted to. And if you just felt like you wanted to sew it, you could definitely sew that on there yourself. You could embroider it whichever way you want to do it. If you didn't have yarn, you could even use your Cricut. If you have a Cricut and, you know, um, cut something to put on here, whichever way you want to do it. Give yourself some options. And I, I'll tell you, I really like the way this pillow turned out. I do, I like it. There's definitely, it's not perfect. There's a little bit of yellow showing. There's a little bit of glue showing here and there, but I'm gonna put this on my couch and I'm gonna be proud of it. 
Okay, so a little bit of fuzz came off. I'm just gonna remove that fuzz. Now I've got a pillow here that I use specifically for stuffing other pillows. And I'm just, when I pull it out of the pillow, I take it in my hands and pull it apart several different, you know, like pull it and then push it and pull it. You see what I'm doing there, kind of fluffing? And you wanna shove that in there to the bottom corners first, you know, the farthest away from me. You can see what I'm doing. And then continue to pack it in there um, till you get close to that outside. You don't wanna put too much in where the opening is. You can always fluff that up later, but kind of get that out of your way. I like to use some clamps when I'm doing pillows to help hold things in place. So that's what I'm doing. I'm using those clamps to give me an extra hand. I'm holding that pillow um, under my arm so I can hold that seam straight. And then pinching it together using my clips, giving it a second to dry and cool. Make sure that it is sealed all the way across and I've just got that corner left there. And again, you can use a special glue for this if you would like, or you could sew this yourself rather than gluing it. Whatever works best for you. And then you can just fluff it all out. Shaking that pillow down, fluffing it, pushing it out into the corners. And I think that looks pretty darn good, don't you? Not bad at all. I'm gonna work with it. Theirs was $69.50 for just the cover, and I got a whole pillow for free. Which one of these projects did you like best, and will you be trying one of these? I hope you do. If you are not already part of my YouTube family, I would love it if you would join in. If you liked anything that you saw in the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching my video. Check out the links below to see more. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.